I want to um, caution everybody because we have a very, very large storm coming. A powerful storm approaches, bringing with it the potential for significant snowfall tomorrow and into the weekend. Cities preparing for the onslaught of winter weather. Shoppers cram stores in a last minute rush for supplies and a warning against venturing out. If you don't have to drive tomorrow, please don't drive. We have team coverage tonight with meteorologists Craig Herrera and Jordan Steele. All right, let's get right to it, Craig. Yeah, let's get right to the timing on this and the cold weather's been with us. You heard that if you don't have to drive tomorrow, don't the morning hours. You may not experience some of the snow, but it's the commute home. We've got 20s and 30s on the map right now. Let's begin with the watches, warnings and advisories. We'll begin with this. The bullseye, the target right over Puget Sound winter storm warning, which is the highest level. You go advisory watch and warning. We could see anywhere from four to eight inches of snow, all highlighted by pink. It's important to note and stress. These are estimates. You some of you will get a little more. Some of you will get a little bit less, uh, and that's beginning at 12 tomorrow afternoon. Takes us all the way through Saturday, 12 o'clock. Big picture as we look at the big blue there. This is going to be a winter weather advisory beginning at 4 p.m. tomorrow through Saturday, 4 p.m. The Olympic and the Cascade Range could get 6 to 10 inches of snow. The lower line area, Chehalis, Olympia, up through Bellingham, anywhere from 2 to 4. Again, these are estimates. Some of you will get a whole lot more, some a little bit less. The wind, a big concern, especially for the northwest interior. Northeast winds coming through the Fraser Gap, which is one of the ingredients, which is what we need for the storm, gusting up to 60 miles per hour. It looks like overnight Friday through Saturday, so that could potentially cause some power outages as trees could come down. A lot of snow on the trees as well 730 here we go you got some snow starting to move in from the north it looks like this will be from north seattle through everett up to the north and we've got a wintry mix right along port angeles squim 12 o'clock it's starting to move slowly down to the south by the time we get to six o'clock you've got widespread snow saturday morning more of it in place and by the evening hours we're starting to see an exit out of this but we've got more to talk about with this and jordan meteorologist jordan Steele taking it from here because boy this is going to be a big one for us yeah Could and of be. course everybody wants to know how much snow am i going to see in my house and is this going to be completely accurate so there's a lot of stuff going in with this system and of course we learned from last week's storm that if you get a specific band to just sit overhead like it pretty much did for all the metro areas we could get hammered of course with snowfall now the general consensus here is we're going to keep it around four to eight inches specifically in the pink zone that craig just showed you where the winter storm warning is currently set up shop but as you can see depending on where you're watching some of the outlying spots maybe only picks up a couple of inches nothing too bad especially up in the northwest interior you guys will get hit with the wind um, you could have blowing snow but it doesn't look like you're going to get dumped on with some heavy thick flakes like we could see further to the south so when we look at what we could expect. Snow is obviously the big one. The high wind, uh, the further north you are, the higher the winds are going to be, okay, specifically in that Fraser River Gap sp uh, specific spots. And then extreme cold, that's relative. We're still going to have highs in the 30s, lows in the 20s. So, yes, it's going to be pretty darn cold. Here's the real question Are we going to see power outages because of this? Because that could cause major problems, especially with how cold it is and, of course, because of the snowfall. So, we, we have that to worry about this weekend. Next week, we have two scenarios taking place. Monday, we could get another storm to hit us right in the face. If that happens, that's more snowfall coming Monday and into Tuesday. This is one model saying that, hey, I'm still thinking that it's going to come into your neck of the woods. However, there's another scenario that could pan out, and that keeps the storm to our south and to our west, keeping us pretty much snow free in most of the metro areas and keeping that snow down south. So after this weekend, there's more of a question mark in the next week. But the fact that we have these storms nearby, it means that we all need to be weather aware over the next several days. Back to you guys. Okay, Jordan. Well, cities all over the region are preparing for the storm. Public works crews in Everett are running 24 hours operations. Uh, they're stockpiling supplies and scheduling extra staff for the weekend. Linwood says crews are replenishing supplies of sand and de-icer. The city plans to run four snow plows and sanding trucks and one de-icing truck 24 hours a day through the weekend. In Tacoma, the city is deploying 15 snow plows and four sanding trucks. And a reminder from Lake Stevens Police about closed roads due to severe weather. They remind you to obey the posted signage. Taking a live look tonight at SeaTac Airport, several airlines have also prepared for the winter storm. They ask travelers to check on their flights ahead of time. Many have waived change fees or cancellation fees with a few conditions. So contact your carrier to see what they will allow. Were you part of this today? 
What a mess. Tonight, we travel from Seattle to Snohomish County, where the county executive has preemptively declared an emergency effective tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. Now, as communities brace for this weather, there is a last minute rush to get ready. And these are just some of the images that we're seeing tonight. King 5's Natalie Swaby shows us how people are preparing. Five Corners hard work. On a day filled with constant calls. Oh, and long lines of customers. Total is $5.48. David Krakora has to deliver the disappointing news. No, we ran out this morning. Okay. We're no, sorry. He says it over. No snow shovels. And over. We ran out of sleds this morning. And over again. Sorry, thanks. Bye now. It's happening in a place where there's a rush to get ready. Thank you. you have a good evening. It's been madhouse. A madhouse because with more snow on the way, people come in clamoring for one item most of all. Hi. Do you have any uh, rock salts or anything? I'm sorry, we ran out this morning. We but sold all that out within an hour. Alta, would you like a 20 pound, a 40 pound, or a 50 pound bag? And then we started taking pre-orders. And we will hold the bag for you until the end of the day. By phone and face to face, Put your name and number there and I'll take care of the rest. They take down the pre-orders. Oh gosh, hundreds, I'm guessing. Your receipt? Yep. From this hardware store right, in thanks. Queen Anne to this Hagen in Marysville. You find people stocking up before the storm. They're motivated and moving fast while businesses are just trying to keep pace. Can't. We have cleaned out the warehouse. They're busy today and know they will be again tomorrow. We do have a delivery coming in tomorrow. That's when David hopes he can deliver better news. I believe we're getting 11 pallets tomorrow. More ice melt. I suggest you call in the morning just to see if the truck did arrive. Maybe around 9 it will be open at 9. The possibility of it is reason enough to keep the phones ringing. Five Corners Hard Work, can you hold please? Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. We'll all get through it. <laughs> Just going to take some patience. So Five Corners Hardware says it sold 600 bags of ice melt today. They're expecting that shipment from Yakima again tomorrow morning. A 19-year-old University of Washington student who died after reportedly slipping on a sidewalk and hitting her head Wednesday had actually suffered a blood clot in her lungs. The King County Medical Examiner says sophomore Haley Smith died from pulmonary embolism. University police had said it appeared she slipped and hit her head while walking near Drumheller Fountain yesterday morning. It's unclear, though, whether the fall caused that embolism or vice versa. Right now, we are tracking a lot of early dismissals for schools tomorrow. Here's a look at some of the largest districts in our region with changes. Seattle, Tacoma, Kent, Lake Washington, Federal Way, Puyallup, Edmonds, North Shore, Bellevue, and Issaquah. Be sure to check out our website, king5.com slash closings. We're also running a crawl at the bottom of your screen. You can also find information about how many snow days each of the largest school districts have and when they're made up. That and much more info all at king5.com. Former First Lady Michelle Obama has postponed her trip to Tacoma tomorrow. She was coming as part of her book tour. A spokesperson said the tour was postponed out of an abundance of caution and concern for the safety of guests. All the tickets purchased for that show will be honored at the makeup event on Sunday, March 24th.